fundraising at the top of the organizational chart. Hi, I'm Bill Stanjakevich. This is the first day from the fundraising school, and I'm joined today by Ron Schiller. Ron is the author of The Chief Development Officer Beyond Fundraising, now out in its second edition. And his work on this book led him to found and create and lead the Chief Development Officer Network, the CDO Network. And Ron, thanks so much for being with us on the Fundraising Schools podcast. My pleasure, Bill. Thanks for the invitation. I hear this all the time, and my colleagues do when we teach for the fundraising school. How do I get my CEO to understand what I do? How do I get my CEO to even understand fundraising? How do I get my CEO to be engaged with fundraising? And this is something that's come up in your work and that uh, you're helping CDO solve. What, what advice do you have for us today? Wow, a lot of advice uh, drawn on my several tenures serving in the role of chief development officer, but also especially interviews with hundreds of chief development officers over the years, uh, including in connection with this book. And then also more than 100 CDOs have helped found this new resource for chief development officers called the CDO Network. And what emerged from all of that, my own experience and talking with colleagues every day, is that this CEO-CDO partnership is one of the crucial, most crucial aspects, not only for success in fundraising for an organization, but also in happiness for the chief development officer and for that matter, the CEO in their role. So you asked about uh, how do I get my CEO to work with me or to partner with me? And I think the main answer I would give is that CDOs are hired into the role because they are proven, typically, because they're proven fundraisers and because they are proven managers. But that doesn't mean that they've had much exposure to the CEO in their organizations before they move into that role. And without that exposure, a lot of CDOs move into the role not fully appreciating what they're going to be asked to do or really what the CEO needs from them. And on the flip side of it, CEOs who haven't had a CDO before may also not understand. They may just think, okay, this person's going to go off and do lots of fundraising, but they may not understand the critical nature of that partnership that they need to forge. Ron, starting upstream, are CEOs being hired, being promoted, being selected without fundraising or their fundraising knowledge, their fundraising history? being a primary factor in that hiring decision. Is is that one of the takeaways here and something nonprofits and the boards that do this hiring can focus on? CEOs, I think was your question, right? And and executive directors. And that has changed quite a lot over the course of the 35 plus years that I've been involved in fundraising. I remember my first job at Cornell when Somebody, I think a board member or somebody was saying, can you believe that Frank Rhodes has to spend 20% of his time on fundraising? And, you know, Frank Rhodes, his successors would would laugh today uh, when most CEOs tell me that they spend 40, 50, 60, 70% of their time on fundraising. So that really has changed. And I think it changed differently according to the part of the nonprofit sector. So I was at a health care conference, fundraising conference uh, just last week. And there was a discussion about how healthcare is behind uh, in generally is behind higher ed because the pressure on fundraising to fill a strategic role in the financing of the organization happened earlier in higher education than it did in healthcare. And yet it's really catching up quite a lot as government subsidies decrease and as um, as patient revenue can no longer be uh, be increased at the level that uh, that uh, that is needed, just as tuition 20, 30 years ago, the conversation across higher education was tuition just cannot keep going up fast enough to cover the cost. Philanthropy is going to need to play a role. And then it's also different in the arts and environment and in other parts of the nonprofit sector. But overall, I think that CEOs, moving into the role, there's a greater expectation from boards that they be good at fundraising or pay attention to fundraising. But how much they've done in the past varies considerably and how much they really understand about what they need in this chief development officer role 
varies considerably as well. I often say to CEOs, don't just hire the person with the most zeros on the resume. You've got to look for a broader skill set than that. And Ron, uh, and I want to get to that broader skill set in just a moment. But if you're seeing that CEOs are spending at least, if not more than half of their time fundraising, does that mean they have a better understanding and knowledge of the techniques of fundraising or conversely, kind of a shadow side, there's more pressure on them to fundraise. So they're sending that pressure to their CDO. What are you seeing in that regard in this context of the CEO, CDO relationship? Well, what it means is that the CDO has become one of the most important members of the senior team and that that partnership has to be very, very strong, has to involve complete trust and also a deep appreciation for each other's skills and how they will complement each other. And so I think CEOs need to spend even more time in the hiring process of their chief development officer. And that means even the people that they might inherit as they move into a CEO role, they need to spend that time up front to develop a really clear understanding of how they can work together, how they will help each other. So CEOs, uh, the most successful CEOs I've seen, I'll just tell one story. This was a college president uh, who, uh, where I placed a chief development officer more than 10 years ago. They worked together for, for over 10 years before the president moved on to another role. That president spent on average seven hours with each of the finalist candidates. And I've, I haven't seen that much since, but half an hour or an hour is not going to do it to really determine for the CDO as well as the CEO, whether this is going to be an effective partnership. So boards are asking more of their chief executive officers to fundraise. Uh, Ron is pointing out the importance then of the chief development officer being on the senior team and a key member of that senior team with that reality in place. And therefore, the chief executive officers really need to take their time with a lot of intentionality to make sure that they're hiring the right people for those senior leadership positions. And Ron, earlier you mentioned you're suggesting to CEOs that they not just hire the person who's raised the most money but to look for a broader range of skill sets. So the fundraisers in our audience, I'm sure are very interested to know, what are some of those skill sets that you're recommending to CEOs that they look for when hiring their chief development officers? I would say that was the key takeaway for me from the research that I did for the book, the chief development officer, and in fact, why the name evolved from being just the chief development officer to the chief development officer beyond fundraising. Because what I saw and what I heard from chief development officers is that fundraising, the way they thought about it before being in that role, was less than 50% of their job in almost every case in the CDO role. And some of them said as little as 10% of their time was spent on frontline fundraising and also managing their fundraisers. They spent a lot more time than they expected working with boards and not just working with board members on fundraising, but really understanding the overall governance of the organization. They spend a lot more time on financial planning and strategy as a member of the senior team, but needing to forge a great relationship with the chief financial officer. They spent a lot more time on building relationships across the institution with all the key stakeholders and all the key power brokers across the institution. They started to see a lot more in the way of what they would call politics right within the organization and how they needed to be uh, they needed to be really good at being the relationship builder in chief for the organization. The other thing I'll say about CDOs is they have relationships with pretty much every constituency of an organization. And the only other person who has that is the CEO in most cases. So the CDO is balancing a lot of relationships and can never lose sight of the fact that the relationship with CEO is number one. And if that CEO loses confidence in the CDO or CDO loses confidence in the CEO, no matter how good everything else is, it's probably going to fall apart. Ron, that's a wonderful insight that the CEO sees the entire organization but so does the chief development officer working with the board, the chief executive officer, peers, other members of the staff, of course, the donors, of course, the program participants, external stakeholders. You go right down the list. 
how can that reality help the chief development officer lead up? Let's just say they're in that situation where the CEO wants them to fundraise, wants to be involved with fundraising, but doesn't have that sophistication with fundraising just yet, is not aware of those techniques, can easily jump to unrealistic expectations, the things that you've heard about throughout your career, the concerns we hear about when we teach at the fundraising school. What advice do you have to chief development officers to help them lead up to their CEOs? Well, first and foremost is always be honest. And the other is that you are an, a critically important extra set of eyes and ears for the CEO. So bring forward to the CEO things you are hearing from program managers, deans, doctors, whoever it is that is out there talking about what's happening in the organization. Bring forward things you're hearing from board members, remembering the board is your boss's boss, ultimately. And so you don't want to get crossways with the CEO and the board. You want to bring those things forward as quickly as you can with the CEO. And so be that extra set of eyes and ears. Help the person understand the, the, the temperature of the, the whole organization and various constituencies. And then I would say the other critical part is help CEOs understand the importance of um, seeing philanthropy as a partnership, where one of the most wonderful things we get to do as fundraisers is to help generous people be generous in a successful way. And so CEOs, in my experience, very often come to the role scared of fundraising and uh, nervous about fundraising. And now they have the extra pressure of expectations from the board that they will hit the ground running on fundraising and raise more than anyone has ever raised before in the history of the organization. And they're not, they may not have done a lot of it. They also may be afraid of it. In my experience, a CDO who can help explain that fundraising done really well is about helping organizations and donors share resources, bring resources to the table and do things together that they couldn't do on their own. That's a different approach to fundraising than the transactional approach, which is you have money, we have needs, please give us your money. And that kind of approach, in my experience, that's what scares CEOs and for that matter, our other colleagues uh, in our organizations the most. So if you can help build that culture of philanthropic partnership, beginning with your CEO, Give them the joy of the experience of maybe meeting early on some of your best donors, some of your most engaged people, so that they can see that this is actually a pleasure for those organ for those individuals and families and organizations. It's not it's not something that they fear. Then that can help. I think the CEO overcome that fear as well. Ron, if I'm understanding you correctly, it's not so much the techniques, the fundamentals, the management, all of which are essentially important to effective fundraisers, but it's the mindset. It's the philosophy. It's that transformational approach that the chief development officer can communicate to the CEO and throughout the entire organization. Is Absolutely. that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And if that CEO is enjoying it, then everybody's going to succeed. Everybody's going to feel better. And through this work, Ron has created the CDO Network of association where CDOs can come together to learn, share stories, maybe commiserate just a little bit, and yes. also share best practices and celebrate the CDO network. And what Ron is talking about today is consistent throughout all 22 of our courses uh, at the fundraising school that lead to four certificates. Yes, we teach principles and techniques. We talk about major gifts and fundraising campaigns and planned giving and board engagement and all those different management techniques. And we also have a certificate in fundraising leadership. And in our leadership curriculum, we talk about fundraising as a transformational exercise leading up to the CEO and to the board. And it can help you unpack this further. Uh, those public courses are available in U.S. cities in person, also online in the United States or anywhere across the world. And we can bring these courses directly to you. We can even take parts of courses and graft them together in a custom training program just for your nonprofit organization, your association, or your region. Again, in person or internationally, online, uh, and uh, also in person. So we have that available for you along with our quarterly webinars. We have this weekly podcast. We have our textbook, Achieving Excellence in Fundraising, the fifth edition. 
all on our website at philanthropy.iupui.edu forward slash the fundraising school. I'm grateful for the time today and expertise and advice from Ron Schiller in a podcast produced by Jennifer Boffman and Mike Anthony. I'm Bill Stanjakevich. You are now more fully informed on this first day from the fundraising school. Thank you.